Welcome back guys, today local anesthetics. Now before that I need to warn you, I am sick, so my voice not might not be that good and that's one of the reasons why the videos have been delayed. I will get back to them as soon as I am in a better state of health, okay. So local anesthetics, first you need to know what's local anesthesia. So local anesthesia is blockage of all sensations, okay, from a target area. So our main intention is we have to block the sensations from a given area, so local area, from reaching the CNS where it will be processed and then the place from where you feel pain. Now local anesthetics are the chemical agents which accomplish this. So all sensations, I'm not, I'm not just talking about pain, when you talk about anesthesia, you're taking into consideration even touch, pressure, temperature, pain. So, you are not just talking about pain, we have, have to talk about all the rest of the sensations as well. So, that was the definition of how it goes around. Now, when you look at the chemistry of it, okay, the definition states that they have to be chemically similar compounds. Okay, so they are basically amides or esters of benzene. Or phenyl okay so these things which you need to know amides okay esters benzene or phenyl now so depending upon this we have chemical classification so when you come to the chemical classification they'll be divided into amides and esters now the suffix is cane okay in amides the main name will be having an I in it, okay, so for example, so for example, if I were to say, there is an I in it, if I were to say, if I were to say, prilocane, okay, the cane has become the suffix, okay, and there is an I, there is an I, and there is an I in the amides. Well, when you come to esters, you don't have an I in the name except for the cane part. So we have tetracane, yeah, we have cocaine. So you get it. So if you see an anesthetic with an I in its name, then you know that it is an amide. And if it does not have an I in the main name, so it can have it. So basically, two words in one, you get the point, right? Okay, so we have that. Now, chemically again, they are weak bases. Now, why is this important? Since they are weak bases, if you put them in a normal pH, okay, they will be ionized. Okay, some part of it will be, but more tendency towards ionization will be present. If you put it in an acidic medium, also they will be ionized. If you put them in basic medium, they will be unionized. That's why you need to know the chemistry of that their weak base. Now, where do we find the practical application of it? Where do we actually find pharmacological application? Now, if you want faster elimination of the drug, you can acidify the urine okay when you acidify the urine the local anesthetic or the metabolized version of it will be in ionized form and since it's in ionized form it will find it difficult to get reabsorbed okay so acidification of urine increases its elimination next normal ph okay forget about that basic okay now when they're in basic form they're unionized and what does unionized help in? Lipid passing. Okay. Since it's unionized, it can freely pass through the lipid membrane. So it enters the cell at a faster rate. So if you were to administer sodium bicarbonate along with the local anesthetic, you would have a faster uptake. See, we found practical applications of it so soon. So 
if you want the exact pH, the local anesthetics have a pH of now we will look at the pharmacokinetics. Okay, pharmacokinetics. Now local anesthetics are for them to be acting in a localized area, they are given mostly in a local infiltration. Okay, you take an injection and you infiltrate in the skin area. Or they are also given in same cases IV, you can also give them epidural by slow epidural <coughs> injection. You can also give them as spinal. You have field block. Okay. You have nerve block. We have branch block. We have a lot of types of blocks. Okay. And sometimes they are even given oral. When are they given oral? There should be a PG point. They are given oral in case of perioperative pain. Okay. Now, these are the modes of administration. Okay. Now, after administering them, they have to start acting. Okay. They act. That will be the mechanism of action. So, mechanism of action is quite simple. The mechanism of action is they have to block the depolarization of the nerve fibers of the sensory nerve fibers. How do they do that? What's the first step of depolarization? That's sodium influx. What do they do? They block this. They block the sodium influx by blocking the sodium channels. Now, the question will not be which channel they block. The question will be which type of sodium channel they block. So the answer is voltage gated. Okay, they block the voltage gated sodium channels that's again time gated then there are mechanical gated so what we are going to be looking at is voltage gated voltage gated sodium channels are going to be blocked now how does this happen this is the cell we have the membrane and we have the sodium channels the drug enters the cytoplasm in unionized form binds to the receptor in the cytoplasm forms the ionized form which blocks the sodium channel okay so here we have to note that both unionized form and the ionized form play a role in the action of it okay you need both so it needs to be ionizable as well as it should be able to maintain its unionized form as well now after ionization there is a formation of a functional amide group so there should be a minimum one functional amide group for it to be having a local anesthetic property okay now this was the mechanism of action so we administered it we saw the roots of administration then we saw the mechanism of action then we see onset and duration now the fastest onset again a pg point fastest onset is given by RTK. Okay, we have faster onset given by RTK, and then when you come to the duration of action, the longest duration is by tetrakin, which is a ester. When you come to amides, the longest duration is given by bupivacaine and dropivacaine who have an a half life of 3.4 to 4.2 hours okay now in the esters itself tetracaine is the longest acting we have cocaine which is a mid acting and then you have procaine which is the shortest okay we have one to two minute duration for procaine in amides, we have bupivacaine. We have intermediate given by lidocaine, that is 1.5 hours approximately. Now, these are the important timings which you need to know and which you need to memorize. And now, what happens is you administer the drug. Okay, you administer the drug. Now, their duration invariably depends upon how long they stay in that local area. So, what you can do is you can 
stop or slow down their elimination okay that is the rate by which they reach the liver by administering an alpha agonist sympathomimetic like adrenaline which is a vasoconstrictor okay so by administering a vasoconstrictor what's going to happen is the amount of elimination of the drug from that area is reduced when this thing happens the drug stays in that area for a longer duration of time and produces the desired effect now this is really necessary because all local anesthetics all local anesthetics are vaso dilators again a pg point are vaso dilators except cocaine cocaine is a vaso constrictor hence cocaine and adrenaline should never be given together okay never administer cocaine or adrenaline together because both of them are vasoconstrictors now the longer acting drugs which we saw like tetracaine ropivacaine and bupivacaine are less dependent on your requirement of adrenaline or vasoconstrictor now some patients might be a little sensitive to adrenaline now adrenaline is not always safe to use in people with heart problems so there is a replacement and it's called feliprasin okay it's a semi synthetic preparation feliprasin it's used as a vasoconstrictor when adrenaline is not supposed to be preferred okay now when we come to the metabolism it again depends upon the chemical structure if they are amides or if they are esters now if they are esters we have something in the blood itself that is cholinesterases okay cholinesterases we have pseudo cholinesterase which is the main one they undergo metabolism in the blood itself and amides they reach the liver now again an exception for esters would be cocaine which is not metabolized by pseudocholinesterase and it goes to liver for its metabolism pg points guys pg points now so in case of you have a liver dysfunction the duration of action is going to be increased so you need to have a liver checkup before uh, you know liver function test before you have anesthesia administration so these were the important points in this things again elimination you can increase it by giving acid acidification of urine by using vitamin c and all those things mechanism fractions we discussed that now mechanism of action again uh, as i said mechanism of action depends upon ionized and non ionized form and also depends upon the sodium influx the amount of sodium influx which you are blocking now anesthesia yeah, effect increases with increase in extracellular concentration of potassium ions and anesthesia effect decreases with increase in extracellular calcium ions okay again pg points which you need to know so finally we'll look at the pharmacological effects so it's no use studying all the pharmacological drugs if you're not going to look at the pharmacological effects right now the sensitivity of every nerve fiber towards the local anesthetic depends upon a few factors so mainly we need to look at the diameter so if the diameter is small it will be blocked faster that's common sense so if it is myelinated it will be blocked faster and we have other things we have to look at like the nerve fiber type and the firing rate and all those things but these two are main so when you consider this the order of blocking looks something like this first we have b fibers then we have c fibers then we have a delta a alpha beta and gamma this is the order of blocking okay so pharmacologically they are used as anesthesia <laughs> okay local anesthetics they can also be given as iv and we have some other uses like see in cvs we use lignocaine as an antiarrhythmic 
though we do have many other antiarrhythmic drugs okay this do still find application there now clinically they can be used as local anesthetics in case of minor operation and OT procedures now other ways they can be used as epidural okay low concentration for post operative analgesia okay now epidural has an important phenomenon that is it is prone for developing tachyphylaxis so again pg point tachyphylaxis is not only seen in tyramine administration it can also be seen in epidural anesthesia by local anesthetics so pg point now they can also be given oral as earlier mentioned for neuropathic pain okay and iv for perioperative pain now toxicity most commonly since it's affecting the nervous system will have cns manifestation for sure now it's a spectrum that ranges for lightheadedness to drowsiness it can lead all the way to coma plus convulsions okay in between you have symptoms like nystagmus also you have vertigo you can have cvs and rs depression so you have a spectrum of cns manifestations along with cvs and rs depression also that might also be originating from cns as well but since cvs is involved we look at it separately they can cause central depression of cvs and they can also because since all of them are vasodilators they can cause uh, you know hypotension because of that and they can also disturb the electrical activity of heart now that is one of the reasons why they are used as an antiarrhythmic but we'll take our special guy that's cocaine you see since cocaine is not a vasodilator and it's a vasoconstrictor the type of complications you're going to have are mi hemorrhage cerebral hemorrhage hypertension and arrhythmia okay so cocaine has entirely different functioning <coughs> different metabolism and different so you have to be careful when you're dealing with cocaine now other toxicity prilocaine causes methemoglobinemia esters okay stimulate antibody production and most commonly involved with allergic reactions and they can also cause neurotoxicity local anesthetics so toxicity now treatment of toxicity well there is no specific antidote okay and the most dangerous thing which you are going to counter is hyperventilation and convulsions now hyperventilations you can cure it by o2 convulsions there are a lot of ways of dealing with it you can either give them diazepams to control the convulsions or you can give you know uh, barbiturates like thiopentol okay or you can give neuromuscular junction blockers to control their convulsions because problematics anyway so with that we finished local anesthetics thank you guys for watching i'll see you in my next video bye